Hey everyone, I'm Amber Gray, founder and CEO with Trusty Oak, and I'm here with virtual assistant Jamie Williams, and we are just gonna sit here and talk a little bit about uh, what it's like working as a virtual assistant at Trusty Oak and talk a little bit about Jamie and the clients that she's serving. Okay, so I know you've got a few other jobs. Do you mind sharing a little bit about like what you're, what else you're doing and how like how Trusty Oak, I guess, mixes into everything you're doing in your various careers? Sure, so I have three jobs. So I work part-time at a chiropractor office and my other job is a cut sit. Yeah. And then- Where's Fritz? Trusty Oak. Fritzy! <laughs> For me, I feel like I thrive better working a few different jobs than working one full-time job. And I think that's what Trusty Oak introduced me to because when I started with Trusty Oak, I was working full-time at a job I hated, chained to my desk for nine hours a day for a company that was in business for 30 plus years and they hated change. I felt like I was living in the 90s every single day. <laughs> and then I started working for Trusty Oak on the side, just a couple hours a week. And then that grew into something more. And I realized one day that I cannot go in an office anymore with no windows chained to my desk and I'm not growing. And then I went to a career coach and then she told me that I would do better doing multiple jobs. And so that's, that's what cool. I set out for. And I realized that that's what I needed to do. That's and awesome. I love health care. That's what I'm passionate about. So I do that part time. I love animals. And I feel like with Trusty Oak, I'm helping my clients grow their business and doing what they need to do. And by helping them grow, it's helping me grow and helping Trusty Oak grow. And Keep so I, growing. I feel like it's all like interconnected. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, one of our core values is to keep growing and what that's talking about is how we always have to be working on developing ourselves, our character and our competence. So it's a mix of like, you know, getting your marketing training and all of those different mm -hmm. other ways that you're learning the skills that you need, but mm -hmm. also learning how to, you know, learn different aspects of business that you might not have been able to see if in a traditional job role, but with this being small business owners, you can kind of mm -hmm. see all the different moving parts that make it happen. So, so what does a typical week working as a trustee OBA look like for you? I'm really big into to-do lists and I like to plan out my week. Mm -hmm. And so I start usually like on Sunday night, Monday morning, I look at all the tasks that I have to do for my clients each week. And then I put them in a project management tool. I use Trello for a couple clients. I think that's just, getting organized each yeah. week. How often do you meet with your clients? It depends, like a couple of my clients, um, it'll be weekly. Okay. And then I have set calls every other week, All right. just to touch base and talk about different projects or upcoming projects. But sometimes I'll have a client, she'll email me and say, do you have time for a quick five minute phone call? And so I'll either let her know like, yes, call me right now or give me 15 minutes. Um, I'm pretty That's flexible. I kind of just want to let my um, clients know that I'm always there for them, but I also have boundaries as well. Yeah, no, that's important to have. Yes. Okay, so when you're on, like for these meetings, are they, how long are the meetings usually, 30 minutes? Or? Um, It usually depends. Like one of my clients, we have a call set up every other Thursday and sometimes she'll say, oh, this will only be a 30 minute call and then we'll be on the phone <laughs> or on Zoom for two hours. But that's also it. I feel like I have a really good relationship with her. So sometimes we'll talk about work and sometimes we'll talk about other things. So it just varies. Live music. Live music. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that you've had some long calls about that. Okay, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the the types of tasks that you're doing for your clients, like majority wise, or maybe just kind of give us a rundown of the different types of things that you're doing for your clients. Well, I do a lot of social media marketing. I'll plan out the content and schedule the content, um, email marketing as well. Um, I have another client that he sometimes um, wants me to look for jobs for him and so I'll just research different jobs and apply for him. Um, blogging, formatting, and publishing, uh, minor website updates, 
mostly marketing, some admin things. Like I have a client that I'll do weekly um, follow-up emails to um, all of her clients that she met with that week. Okay. Um, if clients have any upcoming events, I'll schedule those and create those in Eventbrite and do all the marketing around that as well. Okay. I do email organization. One of my clients had over 80,000 emails. And so <laughs> I am continuing to help her get more organized with that. Um, organizing Google Drive for clients. Um, recently, I rebranded some of my clients' marketing materials because they were really outdated. Um, I feel like there's nothing I can't handle. I always tell my client I would rather them give me tasks that if they think that I can't do, if I can't do it, I will find someone that will do it. I just want to get it done. Like one of my clients, she was afraid to give me admin work because she said, you're so good with social media. I feel terrible asking you to do these admin tasks for me. <laughs> no, give me everything. I want you to delegate to me and I want to get you more organized and make you more efficient. You don't have time to do these tasks and I actually enjoy doing admin work. Mm -hmm. So please just, delegate and it it'll make everyone happier yeah so how many emails are in her inbox now oh i think she's down to like 10,000 80,000 80, to 10,000. Yeah. You do a lot of marketing stuff. We talked about the tasks that you're doing for your clients. So where did you get your training for marketing and your experience for doing that type of work? I have a bachelor's degree in marketing and okay. then um, I've always taken like continuing education courses throughout the years and even my jobs before Trusty Oak, I've, they've all been in marketing or event planning. Okay, so what made you decide to become a virtual assistant? That's why I originally wanted to work for Trustee Oak, is just to make some side money. But then after realizing, after working with Trustee Oak for a couple of years, I did not want to do a full-time job anymore because I really enjoy Trustee Oak. I feel like I'm always learning. All my clients are different. I'm constantly learning from them, constantly growing. And what I love about Trustee Oak is that there's no drama, there's no politics. I can get on Slack and if I have a question about anything, if I don't know how to do anything, there's always someone there to help. Mm -hmm. Like there's no like job too big. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's just I don't know. It's just fun. Well that's one of the things we're we we're that's we focus on trying to, you know, establish collaboration, opportunities to lean on each other and have that kind of camaraderie. So you can still do your multiple jobs, kind of have the flexibility that you're looking for, but not have to be alone in it all. So yeah. Let's talk about drawbacks of being a virtual assistant. What would you say are, are some of the, I guess, the, the drawbacks to working as a VA? I think sometimes when clients, since I've been with Trustio for a long time, I've had many clients. And I think one of the biggest struggles is clients don't like to delegate and they like being in control and or they don't know what mm -hmm. to delegate and then they don't communicate with you and that's sometimes frustrating yeah I would say that's probably the the biggest challenge we have is is entrepreneurs that don't want to let it go you know it's something they've probably done themselves for a really long time so it's a little hard to you know just open their hand up and let right. that out. So right. let's say you want to take a couple weeks off for a trip or something, you know, you want to just have personal time. How do you handle getting coverage and that type so of So what thing? I usually do, um, I'm usually a big planner and I love to travel. So anytime I have a big trip coming up, I let my clients know well in advance to um, get everything done before I leave. Or if they need someone while I'm gone, I'll reach out to the trustee of team to see if anyone would be available. Um, during that time while I'm gone, just to be a backup. Yep, no, that's good. All right, so um, one last question regarding your taxes. So how does freelancing affect your taxes? For those those people that are probably looking at becoming a VA, this is a good thing to know about. Right. Um, hire someone to do them for you. That's yeah. what I did. Since I'm a W-2 and a freelancer, my taxes are a little complicated, so I just hired someone to help oh. me out. And all right, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, Jamie, for coming and sharing more about your work as a virtual assistant. Uh, for any questions about either careers at Trusty Oak or working with one of our virtual assistants, visit trustyoak.com. Thank you. Bye.